This is a great method for improving single reads. It involves a few basic skills that anyone can learn. If you use this read balancing method along with a break-in procedure, you will be able to use almost every read out of a box. Best of all, it takes just a few minutes from your practicing. For a really great break-in procedure, check out my blog at www.woodwindbag.com. What do we mean by balancing a read? It's simply making the left and the right side the same. When reads are out of balance, or when one side is thicker than the other side, the reed will not vibrate freely. The reed should vibrate along the entire length of the vamp, or the machined portion of the reed. If it is out of balance, the vibrations are blocked. The key to good sound and response is to get the reed to vibrate. Before we go any further, let's get some basic tools together. First, a reed knife, preferably a double hollow ground available wherever oboe toys are sold, soon also available from Gemstone Musical Instruments. Next, clear acrylic reed holder, about 5 eighths by 3 inches, also available soon from Gemstone. Also, we need 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper, which is available from any hardware store. Use in strips about 3 eighths of an inch wide and approximately 6 inches long. We also need good light, either artificial or from a window, a pencil, and scissors to cut the sandpaper. Okay, let's get started. The best candidates for adjusting are reeds that have been played several times already, even if only for a few minutes. This is very important because reeds that have never been played are unstable. Spending time adjusting a brand new reed usually becomes wasted time because the adjustment required today will be different than the adjustment required tomorrow. What are the symptoms of an out-of-balance reed? When we play it, it may feel resistant, stuffy, unresponsive, or it might just feel too hard. A reed that is balanced will articulate and have a full spectrum of dynamics. Let's play on some of these reeds. These are reeds that have been played on already between three and 10 times for about five to 10 minutes each time. They are stable enough to work on. You can hear the differences in the reeds, but to the player, of course, the differences are enormous. This reed, for instance, feels stuffy, resistant, and might be a candidate for kindling or compost. Actually, it has the characteristics of a reed that is out of balance. Okay, time for some diagnosis. I'm going to show you three different ways to diagnose reed imbalance. First, by playing, we can shut off one side of the reed, then the other side. When I do that, I am literally letting only one side of the reed vibrate at a time. If I squeeze off the left side, I can see how the right side plays. And I can check the left side the same way. should match. They do not. So which side sounds better? Which side has more vibration? Yes, it is the right side. When I squeeze the left side, the right side is the one that is vibrating. The left side seems to be thicker than the right. Let's verify this using our second method of diagnosis. If we look at the reed with the light behind it, it should look like this. Notice that the reed is thicker in the center, which is good, but the left side is decidedly darker than the right side. This confirms what we found by playing. 
Using diagnosis method number three, we can also very carefully bend each side like this. The reed must be wet to prevent cracking and feel if one side or the other is more resistant to bending. Again, the left side feels much harder than the right side. Obviously, this reed needs help. Therapy is out of the question, but with our tools we can balance it. Just remember that the knife is very sharp and treat it with respect. If it is not sharp, it probably won't work. There are several things to keep in mind with any reed adjusting. First, we want to remove wood only in specific areas. This is why a knife is better than other wood removal tools. Secondly, always back up the reed with the piece of clear plastic when scraping to keep the reed flat. Third, the goal is not to make the reed softer, just to enhance the vibrations. Just making the reed softer means losing the core of your sound. It might feel like a softer reed when we're done, but only because it's responding better. And fourth, when you are done, the surface of the reed must be uniformly smooth and gradual. Abrupt changes in thickness or slope will impede the vibration. Let's see where we need to remove material. Take a pencil and scribble in this area, but only in this area. The imbalance, or the thicker part of the reed, extends from just below the tip all the way to the bark. It is very important that wood is removed from the area between the heart and the edge. Removing wood from either the heart or the edge will usually ruin the reed. Remember, what we are doing is balancing and enhancing vibrations, not making the reed softer. So let's begin to work on the reed. First, put the reed on the piece of plexiglass. Grab your knife and scrape the pencil mark off. The first few times that you do this, think of using the knife as an eraser. The pencil marks make it very easy to know where the wood is coming off. Also, watch the shavings. This tells you where the wood is being removed. The scraping needs to remove the wood evenly. Although the motion of the knife is in short scrapes, we avoid repeatedly scraping in one spot, since that would create an uneven surface. High and low spots will make the reed play worse. Do not dig, gouge, or slice. The knife will do the work. You can check your progress by holding it up to the light and gently checking it with your finger if it is not dried out. As a final step, cut a 3 8 inch wide strip of 400 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the entire surface of the vamp, but not all the way to the tip, with an emphasis on the area that was just adjusted with the knife. The purpose of this is to even out any bumps or imperfections on the surface of the reed. This alone will often noticeably improve the response of the reed. Check the reed again by playing the left and right sides and you will see that it is more balanced. It may not be perfect yet since this balancing may have to be repeated several times. Usually it is best to do more adjusting on another day the reed is still changing. So, work on the reed, put it away, and test it again on another day. Patience is by far the most important skill. This technique of balancing takes minimal time and can be worked into your practice routine. A little bit of this every day, along with a good break-in routine, will eliminate most single reed problems and take a small amount of valuable practice time.